Well, first of all, uh, it's not accurate to simply take the overall number and interpret it in the way that some have today. For example, there have been changes in the way those statistics are collected to include domestic violence offences that weren't included in the past. Uh, we've also created a range of new offences uh, with our tough new laws and that has uh, resulted in additional charges being laid. So it's not a simple measure of going from that number and inferring from that there has been an increase in crime. We also have many, many more police on the beat. 1,600 more police throughout the state. And those police are doing their jobs. That is resulting in an increasing number of reports of crime and an increasing number of arrests. We want them to do that. That is a good thing because that is what we employ our police to do, to keep people safe, uh, to take reports of crime, investigate them and arrest offenders with the maximum number of offences that have occurred. Well, it's not clearly worsening. Uh, in fact, here in Cairns, we're seeing early signs of a turnaround in crime rates, and that is very welcome. Our police are doing their job, and we have 1,600 more of them out there doing their job. And that is in part reflected in those statistics, as well as the fact that we have created new offences. They are now included in those statistics. Oh, that's the first I've heard of that concern, but we do have very strong local procurement policies, including for TMR. And so they should be, through these tenders, applying those policies, because wherever possible, we want to see local businesses get that work so that local contractors, local tradies, local workers can be employed. That's a key part of how uh, these uh, recovery funds are designed. So tenders are open. Uh, well, all of our tenders apply that uh, by Queensland policy uh, and it has weightings that support local contractors uh, and uh, I certainly expect that they will be uh, strongly applying our policy because we want to see local tradies working on those roads. Oh, well, that is a concern. Our immediate concern, of course, has been providing crisis accommodation for those people who are now homeless and then supporting them to get back into their homes as quickly as they can. But we know uh, for a while now, thousands of people have been moving from other states to Queensland and that has put pressure on our housing market. We'll continue to work with local government to, sure, to ensure that they are releasing land and approving developments at a rate that can ease that pressure on housing supply and that will continue to be our main focus through tools like the regional plans that we're uh, working on uh, here in the state's far north.